From San Diego, California, this is a One Extraordinary Marriage Show. We're being busy is overdone, romancing is fun, and scheduling sex has taken the guesswork out of wondering when you're going to get some. I'm Tony DeLorenzo, your co-host, along with my beautiful wife, Elisa. From coast to coast and around the world, thank you for joining us. It's time to talk sex, love, and commitment. Give us a call on the Hug Hotline at 858-876-5663 or send us an email to hugs at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. In today's show, we talk about the importance of being in the moment by getting out of your head and into your bed to experience a heightened level of sexual intimacy. And there's an anonymous quote that says, overthinking ruins you, ruins the situation, twists things around, makes you worry, and just makes everything much worse than it is. Ooh, overthinking. That, overthinking. That, that, that's being the big word right there. Your overthinking. Head, being in your head. And, and we're going to be talking about that specifically as it relates to sexual intimacy today. But we start each and every One Extraordinary Marriage show with a hug. And this yes. week's hug is sponsored by Care of. And Care of makes it easy to get your vitamins and supplements. And as we start a new year, we definitely want to be able to share this with you a little bit later in the show. Now, this hug comes from an email we received. And the wife says, we have tried tackling the seven days of sex challenge for weeks. It felt almost impossible. Mm. We have a six month old who got sick and has been teething. So I'm constantly having to nurse my baby, leaving my husband on the edge of the bed. And I just want to say something before I read the the success story here is that they kept trying, Mm -hmm. right? Just because they had a challenge didn't mean that they stopped trying to complete the challenge. Right. There's no failure. Hey, we, we, we grow, we learn. Hey, it didn't work out the first time. We go again. Absolutely. She goes, finally, we are on day four. Even at just day four, we both feel more sexual, caring, and adventurous. Now listen to what happened on day three, guys. She says, day three, our home was robbed. They took all our valuables, but we both knew having each other was more important and we still continued the challenge. Which I give them huge kudos. In all honesty, I don't know if I would have been able to even do that. Having had friends whose homes have been robbed, Mm -hmm. even one of my cousin's homes got robbed. And just hearing about that. So for them to do that, I mean, this is like... This is like no excuses, people. Yeah, no doubt. So wait, I mean, good on you guys. Absolutely. She goes on to say, having a baby totally threw me off the sex road Mm -hmm. like it does for so many. But I'm back on the saddle and ready to ride. Pun intended. (laughs) We plan to go as long as we can and see how many different things we can try. Thank you so much for all that you two do. Your podcasts have saved our marriage. Yeah. And those of you who are curious about what the seven days of sex challenge is all about, we have the fully revised and updated second edition of the seven days of sex challenge, how to rock your sex life and your marriage now available. And we're excited about all that we have added to this new book. So go check it out at seven days of sex.com. I'm so excited. And again, no excuses, you know, little baby, House got robbed. Everybody's sick. Still made it happen. So good. Yeah. And it really does tie into, you know, our focus of being in the moment, right? That's the hashtag for the one family for this year. It's hashtag in the moment. And, you know, we're we're not just looking at one aspect of this. You guys know that when Tony and I get behind the microphones, we're looking at all aspects of your marriage Mm -hmm. and and we're going to each week bring you something that you can take. And, and this week is going to be part two of this in the moment series where we're going to be focusing on being in the moment with your sexual intimacy. Yeah. Like let's get out of your head and let's get into the bed. I love that. He actually, that was Tony's little phrase. And I got to tell you when he comes up with stuff like that, it just puts a smile on my face because that's what we're talking about. Well, and here's the thing recently in our marriage, this has been happening. It's, it's the overthinking, uh-huh. and I'm I'm recognizing it. So as we're going over the sto- uh, over the show notes and and discussing this, and Elisa and I, this is where we we talk. And so as she was sharing her ideas, I had to let her know that in our sex life, it's you know, hey Elise, you need to get out of your head and back into our bedroom because I'm noticing that like there's foreplay going on, there's oral going on, and I can sense that there's this this disconnect with us. And it's really interesting because, you know, what happened, I wish, sometimes I wish that we just had you guys around to, you know, kind of be a fly on the wall when we're talking about how are we going to present this and what are we going to talk about? Because as Tony's bringing that up to me, my thought and what I shared with him was, okay, so here's the deal, dude, right? You're, you're sensing that I'm disengaged. I know I'm disengaged, right? Like this is not 
this is not a shocker. It's not mm-hmm. like, wow, Tony, really? Like, what are you talking about? Which is, which is great to know. I will say from my perspective, it's great to know. But in the moment, I don't know that. I feel like she's just disconnected and not wanting to be there with me. And, and what I shared with Tony is that, So I'm aware of this. I know it's happening. And what I'm trying to do is to actually get into bed with him, right? To get emotionally and mentally and physically there. And we've never, you know, I mean, I know it probably comes as a surprise since you guys hear us talk about all these different things. We hadn't really talked about that dynamic Mm -hmm. that I'm aware of it. And I'm trying to get there sometimes more successfully than others. Right. And, And for those of you whose spouse is there, this is the time to start having that conversation. Elise and I have the intimacy lifestyle set up. So we're having sex often enough that I know there's something going on. And yet it's like, I go through that and then we have sex. And I, and I honestly forget about it because there's this peak moment that we, we have. And I'm like, all right, we're good until the next time. And so bringing this up allowed us to go, Oh, whoa, wait a minute. What are we going to do? And, yeah, we went to all of you this past week and said via Instagram stories, we do mm-hmm. this pretty much, pretty much once a week. We're just like getting a pulse for what's going on in the one family. So if you don't already follow us on Instagram, or if you know one of your friends that needs to know about the one extraordinary marriage show, share us on Instagram. Absolutely. But we went to the one family and we said, Hey, why is it hard for you to stay in the moment? Right. What are those challenges to being in the moment with your spouse? And they really fell into like three major areas. And, and as we started to see the response, I love you guys because you're so, you're so as transparent as we are with you, you're transparent back to us when we Mm -hmm. ask these questions. And that is a gift. It is a gift and it is something that we really appreciate. So the three major areas were time, right? Time is keeps you from staying in the moment. So that may be your schedules, right? Having different schedules. Um, how much time do you have? Yeah. The amount of time you actually have to make love Mm -hmm. and just, you know, time being, in a place of fatigue or being exhausted because you don't have enough time. And so you're literally running all day long and dropping into bed somewhere, you know, somewhere probably between like 11 PM and you know, 1 AM just exhausted. And you're like, okay, how, or even at nine, 9 PM, which we do at times as well. How on earth do I do this now? Right. Mm-hmm. So the, so it's this time issue. Then there are the distractions, right? There were a lot of things that fell under distractions. Maybe it's, you know, thinking about the kids. Are they going to hear me? Are they home? Are they awake? You know, it's thinking about other people that might be in your house, which is especially a big thing coming out of the holidays, Mm -hmm. right? We've we've got in-laws in the room, got all this stuff or all the stuff that you have to do. And I think other distractions there would be phones, electronics. Oh yes. You know, yes. uh, Hey, as much as reading is great. And, and Elisa and I love reading. I think in our marriage sometimes, it's a good thing, right? Reading's a good thing, and yet it can become a distraction for us to get in the bed and be sexually intimate because we're like, oh, we're reading. And typically when I'm reading, it's the way to put me to sleep because I'm there and it's just my last bit of just, I don't even remember most of the stuff I read, but I'm reading and I just fall asleep. Right. Often I'm like picking the book and being like, go to bed, close mm-hmm. your eyes, go to sleep. And then the last major area was confidence. Mm-hmm. right? Confidence showing up in your body image, right? How do you feel about the, you know, the skin that you live in? Mm-hmm. Uh, confidence in terms of the differences in desire in your marriage. Somebody wants it more. Somebody wants it less. How are we dealing? You know, is it okay for me to ask for sex? What does that look like? Mm-hmm. Confidence in, in wondering whether or not you're going to be rejected or accepted, right? Confidence in, can we even talk about our sex life? Yeah. And this is a big one that I I find that's coming up more and more is, is the ability to be open about our sexual intimacy and talk about that Mm -hmm. openly, honestly, and transparently. And I just want to share with each and every one of you that it starts small, Mm -hmm. start somewhere and grow into it. This is something that Elise and I have been working on for, for many years ourselves. And I would say there was a time for us where it was difficult to talk about our sexual into me, our, our, our likes, our dislikes. So start somewhere. And it may be as simple as like hugging, holding hands, kissing, you know, some of those non if, or physical touch, but non-sexual. Well, and we've got to look at the fact that it is so important and so critical 
for, for being in the moment sexually with your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. Like that time together when you literally are at your most vulnerable state, right? You're completely exposed both physically and emotionally. And if somebody is checked out in that place, you, you're, you're sending off some, and I know this, I've sent off some pretty serious signals when I'm disengaged. Mm -hmm. As one wife shared with us just recently, that this is the one thing mm. that her and her husband do together. And when there is that disconnect, she has that lack of confidence. She feels like she, she doesn't know what's going on. And that, that causes, I think, from what I could understand in the email, some frustration on her part. Well, some frustration and, you know, what seems seemingly insignificant to the spouse that's checked out because I know when I was living in this place where I'm like, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. Like I'm here. I'm still, you know, like he can still have sex with me, but that, that lack of engagement, that lack of being fully present and fully in the moment actually sends much bigger messages, mm -hmm. right? It, it says you're not important. It says that, that I don't value you or I don't value this time that we're spending together. And you know, we know from so many in the one family because it, it not only do we get the emails, but it came through on the comments that, that you guys want to change this, right? You want to be in this place of being in the moment together in your bed and out of your head, mm -hmm. right? And yet it's a struggle because you're dealing with those feelings of rejection. You're dealing with those doubts about being desired and you're dealing with does this even matter? Right. And, and truth be told that has happened on both sides of our marriage bed. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right. It's not just, it's not just me checking out from Tony. It, it's also, there have been times, although I will be the first to admit they are much less frequent when he checks out on me. Yeah. I, I would say it still happens though. It's in different ways. Mm. And, and I think that's, that's, how you have to look at it as well as that I'll check out in a different way that you, that you check out in. Yeah. You know, and that's, I think that's valid. I mean, we're two different people and mm -hmm. you know, what happens in marriages though. And I know a lot of you have experienced that when there's a lack of being in the moment, when there's a lack of engagement in the bedroom that actually goes outside the bedroom as well. And we've experienced that too. It was actually one of the biggest aha moments when we went through our 60 days of sex challenge. Well, I would even say for myself, it's that in, when we're not connecting sexually in the bedroom, I can have a posture outside the bedroom. That's not in, that's not allowing us to be connected in the bedroom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's sort of, I get disconnected there and then I got to remember that I'm like, wait a minute, I need to romance Elisa. I need to be, you know, engaging with her emotionally because that's the way she engages. So that way we can have that physical. So it's, it's sort of the, it is a, a cycle, but for me, it's like, oh my gosh, I need to really change what's happening outside that bedroom door. So that way I can get in there and be present with you. Absolutely. I mean, it's the whole chicken and egg scenario, guys. It is. Right. Which... It is. Which basically means that someone has to go first. And instead of, instead of waiting for your spouse to go first, because that's what often we do, like, you know, all the years prior to the 60 days, and I just want to you know, yeah, finish that it. little story is that especially when our kids were little, right. I, I was very resentful. I'm like, man, this husband of mine, like he does not help out around the house. And like, I'm responsible for everything. And da, 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 da. And I just, I had this litany of all the things that Tony wasn't or wasn't doing. Mm -hmm. that would just like scroll through my head on a regular basis. And then we committed to the 60 days of sex challenge. For those of you that don't know, it's episode one. You can find it on, on the website. But in that space, when I said yes, and when he said yes, we're going to do this, and we made each other a priority, or specifically our sexual intimacy a priority, all of a sudden there were things getting done in my house or with the kids that I was like, where did that come from? And how did that happen? Well, we were engaged. And when a couple is engaged with one another, all of the other stuff that you have to do, there's a way to get it done. There's time to get it done. There's resources to get it done. Why? Because you're making each other a priority, right? And that becomes so important. And, and you know, here at One Extraordinary Marriage, we believe that, you know, each year builds on the next, mm -hmm. right? That this year is going to be the best year for your marriage. And we know that 2020, I mean, here I am I already, I can't even believe I just said 2020, but that's going to be even better. Why? Because each year builds. And it's like last year's hashtag was what can I do? 
And you know, if you put that together, what can I do to be in the moment? And in this case, specifically in my bedroom, Mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, we could have like a whole like crazy hashtag sentence if we wanted to, which is just kind of funny. We won't go there, but we want to equip you to be able to be able to stay in the moment in the bedroom, to get out of your head. But before we do that, we want to thank this week's sponsor care of, and you know, it's so important that each and every one of us takes care of our health. It's one of those things that we absolutely need to do. And so do something good for your health in 2019. And Care Of makes it easy to stick to those health-related resolutions. Care Of's fun online quiz is going to ask you about your diet, your health goals, your lifestyle choices. And honestly, it takes only five minutes to find out about your personal scientifically backed vitamin and supplement recommendations. And it was so easy for us to do this. Mm -hmm. Literally did it on our phones, was just done. Yeah. And because of that, then what happens is that you get a personalized care of subscription box that gets sent right to your door every month with your personalized packs, which are so great for the busy on the go lifestyle that so many of you, in fact, I would probably venture to say all of you have. And this is really important to me. And I know it is to Tony because we've tried vitamins and supplements in the past and we've got a a cabinet in our kitchen full of them, full of them. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and you have some that you're supposed to take, you know, you're like, oh, do I take two or do I take th-? whatever, like pulling out a pack every day and just going, here you go, Lisa. And one of the things I love is that they've got like a fun little message on every, it's like my little inc- note of encouragement for the day or something fun, but it's easy. Yeah. That's what I was, that's what I was going to say. It's super simple and easy, you know, from the, from the quiz where you want to, where you want to tackle, like what area of health you want to mm-hmm. address first to it coming in the mail to just every single pack daily, open it, take it, move on. I mean, I took mine this morning. I, I, I think I saw you take yours this morning, quick and easy. I mean, to me, it's a no brainer. Absolutely. And the nice thing too, that I like is that I can track my progress with the app, the care of app and actually earn rewards when I remember to take my vitamins. It's a little, it's a little bonus perk. And who doesn't love earning rewards when you're doing something good for yourself? So take advantage of this month's special for the new year offer for 50% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins, go to takecareof.com and enter OEM 50. That's right. It's a new year's offer just for the one family to get 50% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins, go to takecareof.com and enter OEM 50. So As we're talking about staying in the moment in the bedroom, the first thing that I want to tell each and every one of you is that you need to create your own recipe for what works right now, where you are at this stage in life and where you are physically, right? Like we're just talking about health. That's a big component of it. And the reason I say you need to create your own recipe is because what works for Tony and I may not work for the two of you. Mm -hmm. We don't have lots of little kids running around right? Our schedules look a little more similar with where we are at this stage in life, but there have been seasons Mm -hmm. where we've had the littles not sleeping through the night. We've had seasons where we've been up at, you know, to go to work at four 30 in the morning, right? You've got to know where you are and you've got to know, just like so many of those comments, what are those distractions that are keeping you from being in the moment? Like let's identify those. Let's what's keeping you out of it or in your head and out of your bed first. Cause you got to tackle those. Yeah. Because ooh, that is a big one. That is a big one for sure. Because if we're unable to get those off of our mind and out of our head, this is where the distraction comes and we're not in the moment with each other mm-hmm. in the bedroom. And so what do you need to do? And what do even, even as a spouse looking at it, what can you do for yourself and your spouse? Like have the servant heart to know that maybe there's something that you can do to really help your spouse along. Something I learned Mm. with Elisa, right? It's, it's again, the questions and answers that we get. And then the, the more important part is applying that and knowing that, Hey, what allows Elisa to get out of her head quicker is going to be a bonus for her and for me. Right. That's why the communication is so critical. And it's trying different things. Definitely have to try different things, work through it. If it doesn't work the first time, it's okay. Come back to it, adjust. You may fall back into that rut. A a buddy of mine is so great because he has this this amazing... uh, 
picture, this analogy he shares about a rut. And you, you think about a car rut. You know, you're going down a dirt road, and that's, a, that's the, the, the rut you're stuck in, right? Because that's where you're at. And what does it take to get out of that rut? Mm. And, and, you know, you have, you have your car going down the road, and to get out of that rut, if it's, a, if it's a small one, no big deal. You'll just pop over and you'll just roll on. But if that rut is six inches, nine inches deep, to get out of it, you really got to turn that wheel and get your wheels out of there and moving. And then you have to start to fill that rut so you don't fall back in it. Wow. So it was really, it's like, whoa. And it's so easy at times for us in our sexual intimacy. Hey, we make a change and it happens for a week. And we're like, yeah. And then the next week, we go back to what we've been doing. And then the third week, we're back to what we're doing. And we just sort of go like, oh, that's just the way it is. And in reality, we've just fallen back into that rut. Mm-hmm. And we didn't do enough to fill it in yet. You know, we, 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 may, have done, we may have added an inch, but it's a nine inch rut. And yeah. that's not enough for us to get out all the way. So what a visual, you guys. What a visual of, you know, so often people talk about, you know, their sex life is in a rut. Yes. Right. Like people, people use that analogy all the time. And so it's, what can I do to get out of that rut and be in the moment? Right. And and that analogy that, that sometimes it's deeper than other times. And you're going to actually have to not just, you know, put the effort in to get out of the rut, but you've actually got to fill in for yourself. You got to fill in that, that deep hole. Mm -hmm. so that you can actually get out of it and you can go on a smooth path in a different direction. And, you know, it's having these conversations are not easy. It's never easy when I have to like come to Tony and say, Hey, this is what's going on with me, or this is why I was disengaged or, you know, I, I, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. it's not easy, but I will tell you that every time we push through one of those conversations and I'm able to own my stuff, our relationship, our marriage gets deeper. And so while it's easy to say, oh, you know what? I don't want to talk about our sexual intimacy. You will put a ceiling on that area of your marriage if you choose not to explore what your own recipe is to make that work. So here's a question I'd ask you then as the coach. What do I do if I'm willing to talk about it Mm -hmm. and yet my spouse doesn't want to talk to me about it? Happens all the time happens all the time. Uh, partly because a lot of people were raised in families where, you know what, sex is not one of those things that we talk about, that we talk about. And, or there's a lot of shame and guilt around sexual intimacy or they're just messaging. And I'm going to tell you, if that's been you, you can have a different life. You can lead something much different than what you were told because that's how I was brought up Mm -hmm. and I grew up. So I know all of that, not talking about sex, it's bad. I, I get it, and I will tell you that you can have the life that you desire if you're willing to start taking those steps of talking about it. And it really, you know, it starts with baby steps, right? It starts with being able to talk about one aspect of being physical. It may not even be being sexual. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, just right. getting to the physical part of it, the kissing, the hugging, the holding hands, the, the touches that mean something but mm-hmm. are not sexual. I mean, we did a show years ago called Birds and Bees, mm-hmm. right? And that really dug into, you know, what was that messaging that you received? What, what have you internalized? And, you know, as we talk, even in being part of this new year, you know, what's the vision that the two of you have for your marriage? Because a lot of time, even those people that don't want to talk about sex want to have an amazing sex life. And they need someone to help them bridge that gap, mm-hmm. right? And that may be, you know, Tony jokingly called me the coach. I, here at One Extraordinary Marriage, I am the coach, right? And, and that may be having that conversation with somebody else to say, here's an area of our marriage that's, it's not, you know, in the toilet, but it's not where we want it to be. Mm-hmm. And, and can, we, can we get strategy around? And, you know, just like I said earlier in the recipe part at the start of this, that recipe for how the two of you get to deepen sexual intimacy to being able to have those conversations, it changes for every single person. Yeah. And if you want to learn more about coaching with Lisa, you can go to com slash coaching.
And so I just want to make sure that we give you some different ways to create your own recipe, right? Some of those ideas that actually came out of the one family, some of them are ours, some of them came from the one family of how you can actually create an environment where you're in the moment, mm -hmm. right? And when we were just talking about touch and, and a lot of people did talk about touch, you know, massage, hand holding, you know, that pat on the back the or pat on the butt, butt. hand on the back uh, or pat on the back however you want to say that right but those get massage oils you know that that's that's huge use lube you know make sure the kids are asleep i would say get your, yourself a sound and sleep machine that that's been a big plus in our marriage we don't use it as much now but when the kids were younger and there's still times though during the middle of the day where we're like oh you know what we're gonna go take a nap and the sound and sleep machine comes on because you know kids kids are awake tv's on they're doing stuff so i'm like eh, yeah. we're gonna put that on we're gonna have sex you know here, here's a big one that i think all of us can work on and it can be one of the most difficult one is release all the other stuff that's just going on in your mind if you need to know what's going on or you need to get to it have a pen and paper have something get it all down and out of your head. And then that way, and this is me because I tend to be a stuffer in the mind, I would call it. And that is, I don't write a lot of things down and I'm just trying to keep it all in my head. But when I do release it onto paper, like pen to paper, it's done. It's there. I can move on. Mm -hmm. So if that's you just, it, it may be right beside your bed as your spouse is getting ready. You're just writing that stuff down. And, and once you put it there, Leave it there and and be sexually intimate with your spouse. Lock the door. Please lock your doors. Yes. Please it, lock your doors. Just, it's just good lock for everybody. them. It, it's okay. You know what I mean? We've had instances where, thank goodness we have, because then we get the little knock and it's like, oh, have a robe, have something nearby if you have to jump up, been there, done that. You know, um, leave, out, leave work outside. Mm -hmm. Leave work outside the bedroom. For us, that's a big thing because our relationship as, as much as people are like, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. You guys get to work together. There's a lot of complexity that goes with it. And we still struggle with it at times, you know, between the work, the marriage, the relationship, us, how, how are we, how are we connecting together and yet with the one family? And, and so we got to leave that behind. One of the things that may not seem so obvious as we're talking about all of these different, you know, components that could go into your recipe is coming from a place of gratitude, mm -hmm. right? Giving thanks for, for everything, for the small things, for the big things, for, you know, how your spouse looked at you today for the, mm -hmm. you know, picking up milk on the way home for putting the kids to bed, whatever it is, but getting into that place of gratitude really does allow you to be much more present because you're not like Tony said with the other stuff, you're not rehearsing all of the, the litany of the negatives, when you're like, you know what? I'm really grateful that, that he or she knows how to touch me. I'm really grateful that they're responsive in the bedroom. I'm really grateful that I got new lingerie for Christmas, whatever it is, right? But moving into that place of gratitude allows the two of you to connect at a much deeper level in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and a couple more eye contact, mm. make that eye contact with each other. Because when you do that, there's something magical that happens. And for those of you who, who don't leave your lights on, Find a way to have a dimmer, have a soft light. It is amazing what will happen with your lovemaking and that sexual intimacy when you do look at each other. And it can be tough. And yet it's amazing that connection and wow, are we just here together? Um, you know, think about the diffuser, the lubes, the heater, all those other, other little things that allow you to just be in the moment. And, you know, to wrap it up, be in a place where, you know, or create an environment where you can actually tell one another, you know, what feels good or what works, right? It, that helps you. Like when you're communicating, like actually verbally communicating, that helps. And I just, I want to close with just a story that I think helps you to, to be able to just think about leaving stuff outside the bedroom and getting into the bedroom. And there's a story about, you know, a family who the kids would watch dad come home every day and they would see him just like touch a bush outside the door as he would walk in the house. And, and, you know, they're like, what's, what's dad doing? What's dad doing? And, and, you know, they got to a point where one day one of the kids is like, dad, why do you touch that bush? Like every night when you come home and every day when you go into work and, and the dad said, you know what? I leave everything that I don't need to, you know, impact the family. I leave that at the front door. 
because I know I can pick it up the next morning. But in that moment, when I walk through this door to be with you and your mom, that's my time to be fully present with you. And I don't know for each one of you what you need to leave outside your bedroom so that you can be fully present in the door. But it may be creating, you know, a blanket or something that you just touch when you walk in there and you say, you know what, I'm going to be fully in the moment for the time that the two of us are in this room and create that ritual for yourself so that you can leave the yuck behind and be fully in bed and fully present in the moment with your love. Yeah. All right, you guys. We hope we've given you a ton to think about as we progress through our In the Moment series and really a lot to think about in your sexual intimacy. So this week, think about it. What are you going to do? What, what's going what's gonna to be that, that switch that's going to happen? What's the, what's the one item you're going to start doing that's going to allow you to be closer, to be more intimate, to be in the moment with your spouse when it comes to your sexual intimacy. We love you guys. We're excited for what's ahead for you. Don't forget, you can hit us up. We'd love to hear your success stories and your hugs. You can send those to hugs at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. Love you guys. Have a fantastic week, and we will catch you next week.